Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an insightful and informative video right here on my YouTube channel. We are back with another episode of my new series called The Investor Chair, where we sit down with South Africans from all walk of life and we talk about their relationship with money, investment, budgeting, whatever you want to talk about relating to finance, we talk about it right here. And also guys, I just, I just want to say thank you for the 10,000 subscribers. That really is appreciated. And now let's go for 20,000 subscribers. And today we are sitting with the big man himself the cfo of afromed i know a lot of you guys have been asking me to do an interview uh, around uh, afromed to do videos diving diving deep into this company so i thought let me just bring the cfo the big man himself uh, behind the company so we can talk about it so as always guys please do enjoy the like button the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you get notified with every new video i drop so without wasting any time let's get into today's video And welcome to my YouTube channel. You're the CFO of Afromed, the big man himself. Now, without wasting any time, let me allow you to introduce yourself because those who know me, they know me. I don't like to introduce people. I want you to introduce the way you want to be introduced. So, who's the CFO of Afromed, and what? When did you start becoming the CEO of Afromed? Um, hi, Ivan. Yeah, it's good to be <laughs> yeah. be here and, and uh, oh. talking to you. Um, I've I've been appointed the CFO of Afrimat six years ago. Okay. Um, I have joined Afrimat thirteen years ago. I Ooh. used to work for for um, Price Waterhouse Coopers. Mm. Um, I did my articles there. I was a manager mm. uh, for a long time. I spent sixteen years with with Price Waterhouse Coopers, mm. and then I I joined Afrimat as the group accountant. Yeah. Um, um, and I uh, worked myself up, um, become the company secretary at yeah. some point. That's all additional work <laughs> that I <laughs> took on yeah. um, in, in my role as the group accountant mm. and the business grew. Um, at some point, mm. um, I started studying my MBA and half, <laughs> halfway through my MBA, yeah. um, Andres uh, offered me the opportunity to, to move out of finance mm. and, and go and run our KZN region, oh, okay. uh, KZN and Free State region. Yeah. So in 2013, I, m I moved there with my family. Mm. Um, uh, and yeah, I was out of finance, so I started running that business. Yeah. Um, it's totally different to, to just sitting <laughs> behind, in, the desk. <laughs> behind a desk doing accounting yeah. work and putting together all yeah. the figures. Uh, that uh, Before I did that, I, I basically did the consolidations mm -hmm. and the group reporting yeah. and the annual report, all those things. So what I learned in the MBA was a good yeah experience to go and uh, apply that in mm. in running a business <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah i was in case at for for two years mm. running running that business um uh, we had a lot of um challenges mm. we, I, I always called it with with the operational guy that helped yeah. me there that we we've got an ad adventure mm. um running that business because it's being an entrepreneurial business and having things um, happening mm -hmm. every day there's different things happening so I, I learned quite a bit there mm -hmm. and I think that gave me the opportunity to understand the business quite well yeah. um, from from the crushing processes and how to work with people mm. e all, all the other things um, <laughs> apart from fi and, and even the finances mm. because my, uh, my view is always um, and, and people that have seen me on presentations mm. I I say finances is a scoreboard <laughs> of your decisions that you make yeah, in the business. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you make every day you make a lot of decisions mm. in the business and everybody in the business are making a decision. Where you do th something or where you don't do something, yeah. that has got a financial impact. And at the end of the year, you look at all the decisions yeah, that you yeah. make and the result of, of that is, is reflected in your finances. No. So, so, so yeah, I've... Um, I, I've been in KZN for two years mm. and then our previous CFO um, decided to retire yeah. and, and then Andres approached me and asked me to come back as the CFO um, oh, of okay. Affirmat and that was um, the beginning of 2016 mm. and now we're six years later <laughs> yes, um, then, yeah. and I'm still here. Yeah, yeah let's, I, I want to just before we dive into what I want this conversation to be more of 
are getting to understand you, the CFO, the guy behind the company who mm. run it. Because one thing that's important, especially for us retail investors, mm. is to get to know the people behind the companies. Because mm. some of us, for example, I'm a student. I, mm. I, I'm a full-time law student, and every time I get a little bit of a hundred rand, I get a little bit of a uh, fifty rand, I invest into companies such as mm. Afromed, and the whole, this whole series is to get to know the leadership behind the companies we put our hard-earned money as retail investors into. Mm. And I think one thing I just want to ask you in terms of being the CFO of Afromed and the change that you've had so far in the past six years is, in your understanding of Afromed and where you see going, do you think, like, I'm not sure if I'm throwing you in the deep end right now, <laughs> Sunday. I remember I was having a Twitter space with the CEO, and I was like, I keep on throwing this guy into the deep end right now. Like, your role as the CFO of Afromed in the next, uh, let's say the next six years, because you've already been here for the six years, for precisely, yeah. do you see it as one that one to grow the company beyond what it is right now? Or yeah. do you see it as one to just elevate the dreams yeah. that already been established? Yeah, look, the, the dream is to build um, Afromat into mm. a, a sustainable business that, and, and being, I think we, uh, all of us share, share that dream that we want to build something that's, mm. that's an example yeah. for South Africans that you can make it work. Yeah, you can, can make, it, make work. it work in the current economy. Mm. There's a lot of opportunities mm. uh, and you can make it work with good ethical um, leadership yeah, um, yeah. in in your business, you, you you don't have to take shortcuts, yeah. you ca you, um, but you have to look after all your stakeholders. Yeah. So it, it is a system of different stakeholders, and you need to look after all your stakeholders. To, to answer you, is uh, we want to still grow mm. Afrimat. So we want to leave that legacy yeah. when when we retire um, and <laughs> and move out of the business. Yeah. That there's a, a bigger business, something that everybody can be proud of. Mm. Um, that's there to look after our children and, and their children. Um, yeah. that, and, and, and you can either in a business, you can either, uh, and, and, and I'll share my first <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can either grow a business, mm. but if you, uh, or if, if you don't grow a business, it's going to stagnate. Yeah. Um, and then over time, um, the, your customers are going to leave you, so your profits and everything is going to start declining. Yeah. Your good people are going to leave you. So, so you always need to, to build um, build and grow the yeah. business, and and that is where where, where we from. We we want to still grow the business. Mm. We want to continue with our growth path that we saw over the last fifteen years. Yeah. When when Andre shared you that we was listed in uh, two thousand and six, yeah. um, we had a, f a phenomenal fifteen years growth, and we want to continue with that. So we always look at new opportunities and how can we do that. Just being part of what you just said, and now in terms of being able to see growth in the company, right? Uh, South African economy currently is going throughout a downward. Like everyone is complaining, there's a crisis, and majority of international investors are starting to pull out. And majority of small, big, medium companies who are South African based and operating here in South Africa are also struggling. But here comes Afrimet, showing good numbers, showing profits, showing growth for the past few years while other people, even some companies in the same sector as you guys are struggling. How are you guys been able, to, number one, to find the morale to keep your staff going and to operate in their prime and to be able to help the company succeed? Secondly, how is you top leadership as a CFO and also when you're talking to the CEO and the other team in the top leadership of the company be able to navigate the South African economy with everything going on? I know that the price of so the minerals that you guys are, mm. are dealing with also been at the advantage of you guys. Mm. But in terms of the staff morale, in terms of being sure that you can navigate the mm. economy of South Africa the way it is, how are you guys doing it? Yeah, I think um, in, in the current environment, there's, yeah. there's a lot of difficulties and one, one can easily get caught up with all the negative sentiment yeah. that's out there. Um, and, and my view, and, and I think um, a lot of our senior managers is, uh, yes, things are going to change, mm. and and it's not going to be. It will probably never be the same as what it yeah. was. And and even for businesses, there's cycles. Businesses goes through mm. goes through cycles. There's always challenges in yeah. business. If it if it was very easy, um, everybody could have do could have done that. Yeah. Um, so there's there's always your challenges. The the question is how do you how do you um, change your mindset around mm. these challenges because you can you can become a victim yeah. of, of all these things. And, 
and pity yourself and go into a slump and uh, start thinking mm. all the negative stuff. But uh, or you can have a more positive attitude yeah. to look at, look, this is the reality. Yeah. And how are we going to m- ensure that the company and ourselves s- thrives and survive yeah, yeah. in this in, in this new reality? Mm. And, and, and I think it comes down a lot to leadership. If, yeah. if your leadership of the company also start start sending out a negative message and start believing that this Preaching is the end the, the, the and we're not going to we're not going yeah. we, to see the end um, I, I, the business will also start yeah. start failing and yeah. you will see if your, your good people leave so you, you need to start with leadership and you need to to um, to believe that um, they, they, there's still a lot of opportunities mm. out yeah. there and, and you need to start yes the reality is there there is difficulty but um, being in a, in a team uh, and, and for Afrimat, yeah. we, st- we still see a lot of opportunities. We've got a, um, a colleague that um, says, never waste a good crisis. <laughs> so in every crisis, there's, yeah. there's opportunities. You need and you need to, and if you start, um, if you start um, developing that uh, mentality and mm. working on that culture of the business, yeah. let's, let's work together to get through this. Mm. You, even if you look at COVID and how we got through COVID, it was a team effort. Yeah. Everybody pulled together. We did a lot of cash flow forecast of what's going to happen um, if we don't get any. F- when we were into into that lockdown level five, mm. um, we immediately had all our revenue cut. We had yeah. no cent of revenue, but we still had uh, two and a half thousand people mm. at that stage that we need to pay salaries. Yeah. We've got suppliers that wanted us to pay them, and and and, and we did a lot of work on understanding what's what will the impact be on our cash yeah. and, and what will the impact be on our balance sheet and and we stuck to to our beliefs that um, our employees is important yeah. and we are going to support our employees uh, we do have a strong balance sheet to mm. get through through the COVID period and at that point we decided we're going to pay our employees full salaries yeah. we're going to pay our suppliers we're not going to delay their payments and and it helped us now we 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 threw the Mm. worst part of of the lockdown um we we get that culture you can see that in the culture people are more motivated Mm. because the company looked after them they now all of a sudden more motivated to try and make it work in the current environment with all the challenges people are motivated trying to find ways of doing things differently you you cannot if you if you want to grow you need to be innovative and you need to understand that if you keep on doing the same things as, yeah. as what you've done in the past, it might not work because mm. you know, your market has changed and in a lot of businesses, the market has changed. Um, I think the, mo- uh, the most industries, the market has changed. Mm. Some of them for the better or a bit different. You, yeah. If you look at the f- companies that has gone more online shopping and got it right, the yeah. delivery point, some of them tried delivery um, at <laughs> houses, but it didn't work. Yeah. Some other companies tried it and it did work. Mm. So I think that um, yeah, the, 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 the message is y- y- you need to think th- of the positive yeah, things. Yeah. Where, can we, where can we change our ways of doing mm. um, in the new environment? Yeah. Because things will always change. Um, I, think, I think the main point of that is that the company itself, number one, mm. must be able to take care of its people, be yes. able to take care of its community mm. and the culture mm. during those hard times. Mm. When you get out of it, the people mm. will be feeling... The, the pride of saying let, let this company took mm. care of us when we're in the down now it's our way now to appreciate and show thank you to the company mm. let's put out the more work let's put let's be motivated to show up for the company i think now i just want to move the conversation a little bit into you yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and no, talk sorry. about your <laughs> life uh and yeah. remove Afrimeth a little bit um because i think the one important thing as well i'm trying to do with this series is to build up a culture of South Africans are able to use money wisely, being able to save, understand, budget, mm-hmm. even find ex- alternative ways to earn extra money. Because we know, number one, just saw the figures coming out, I think the past last two mm-hmm. days ago or whatever, unemployment is increasing as well. And consumerism in South Africa is a little bit uh, killing us. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me just say it like that. But in terms of you and your background and your, how you were raised, and in terms of understanding man, how is that? Because I know you did accounting, <laughs> so I've always been someone of, uh, of someone like a little bit love, a little bit of body. So how's your relationship in terms of uh, uh, understanding man? How's your upbringing and how does it shape your understanding of man? And also, where are you from? Like, by bad, what's your bad time? 
Where were yeah. you born? <laughs> I think I was born in Cape Town. Oh, okay. Um, you kept on raised. In yeah, <laughs> I was born in Cape Town. My father was a, a yeah. teacher, so he moved. We we moved quite a bit all over, yeah. uh, all over the Cape yeah. the province. So we we moved to Lady Smith, which is in uh, Klein Karua. Yeah. Um, and then from there we moved to Cradock. So my high school years mm. I was spent in in Cradock, um, and then after Cradock, I moved down to Wooster, which is close yeah. to Cape Town. Um, to do my articles mm. uh, there with Price Audios Cooper. So I started. Me, at which university you went to? Um, I studied part time through UNISA. Oh so I never okay. went to um, a university oh. and just study. Um, I, um, at, at the point where, where I had to go to mm. university, um, we, my, my father mm. um, still had to pay for my two sisters yeah. that's coming. So the financial means wasn't always there. Oh so I see. Um, I've I've found a way of of starting with mm. with my article straight out of matrix. So oh. I started as a as a f as basically mm. just just done with school. <laughs> so after school I yeah. started working, mm. and I uh, and I had to study part time in the evening. So yeah. all my studies um, uh, I, it took me ten years to get my CA. Oh. So there was a there was a few hiccups in between yeah. where you don't pass <laughs> one or two. Yeah. So so my message will always be keep on going keep on going keep on going don't don't give up mm. because that that helped me at some points you 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 don't want to carry on because mm. you didn't pass and 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 you feel yeah you feel a bit negative but if if you stick to it and you yeah. keep on you, you will eventually succeed yeah so um so it took me 10 years to get my ca and after that i did a lot of other yeah. stuff including an mba and oh. a tax um thing so so yeah it's i i my father, um, I, I, I paid off my studies basically while mm. I was working. And, and for the first year and a half <laughs> at, at um, PricewaterhouseCoopers, I yeah. only did filing. Um, so I was basically the filing clerk, um, mm. clerk. So we got letters. Um, at that point, there wasn't computers. We still had to do the old way. <laughs> the old way, type yeah. letters. And yeah. then you get a blue copy and a yellow copy mm. that you have to file in different files. So that was my job to file mm. those letters. So you, you you start in your career you always uh, you will probably o always start mm. at the bottom and and, and, and you, you need to up. grow yourself you mm. need to work up yourself and I eventually if if you keep on doing that mm. you should succeed in in your career as well. But in terms of like when you started working, what was your first ever investment you ever made? Like in terms of what was it like buying government bonds or investigated cheese? What the first like what was the first investment and did you like made a mistake with it what was that mistake you made yeah look um being being everybody think if you studied accounting yeah. you know exactly the thing about yeah. investments but you don't mm. you don't um because you you don't know what's going to happen in yeah. the future mm. so you might do an investment to answer you on the investment um I, uh, with your salary that's very low you yeah. can't do a lot of investments yeah. so you you save a bit in in in, in a unit trust yeah. so you, i would I would have um, at that stage. I already started with a small amount, hundred mm. bucks, in, into a unit trust um, that that will build over time. Mm. Uh, a lot of investments take time to, yeah. to grow, so um, you're not going to get rich quick. And if you want to, <laughs> if you want to get rich quick, there's a lot of risk involved yeah. in in the investments that mm. you do, and um, and you need to understand the risks in the investment. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. you might you might decide look, um, uh, and and it. It, it always comes down to balance and mm. you will probably hear me again say a balance if you if you want to take the risk you need to be prepared to take the loss yeah yeah so you don't you shouldn't bet everything and, mm. and that's that's the same with with afmat we yeah. we don't bet the whole farm or the whole business on mm. one opportunity because we can't get it wrong with humans yeah. you, you can always get it get it wrong so when you do take a higher risk investment Make sure that if you r have to write off everything mm. as a bad um, <laughs> or as a learning experience, yeah. that you can still survive. That you mm. your whole salary or your whole um, portfolio is not gone if yeah. you do that. So to come back to the question on what is probably one of my first investments, I can recall I I went through the newspaper yeah. and I saw the results of a company called Moldmate, and and I looked at their share price at that stage. They were on the JSE, yeah. and I don't know whether they're still on the JSE. And I saw, yeah, this company is actually doing well, and mm -hmm. the share price is very low. So I took two thousand bucks, yeah. 
bought some shares two weeks later that 2009 <laughs> was 4,000 right? double so the I, money <laughs> double the money two weeks time so I thought yeah, yeah. this is nice yeah so I sold the shares I mm. got the 4,000 and then I bought um, into a company called Brainware mm. um, and at that stage Brainware was the talk of the town so you see, I, now I think my age is cheap, but I don't even know what company that is. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think they're on the JSE anymore. Yeah. And and some of the people might remember yeah. them. And then within a few weeks, mm. that 4,000 rand <laughs> became nothing. Yo. So, so yeah, that was a quick learning experience yes, yeah. of um, don't, don't try and invest in companies if you don't understand yeah. the full company, probably. Um, so... So at the moment, all my share investments are yeah. in Aftermath because I, I know what we're doing in <laughs> Aftermath. I know where we're going. Yeah. I understand the management team. I'm part of the management team, so I believe in the story. And, and, and if you look at those share investments over, yeah. uh, not a short period, uh, yeah. a month or two, if you look at it over a longer period, yeah. you should get some good, good growth. Yeah, I see. I love when a, one of the s a senior leadership of a company has his hand in the cookie jar with us as well. Yeah. <laughs> but I just to continue the story around your first investment. You said, first time you made it huge, tried again, lost everything. And now let's move that journey into now in terms of where you are with your investment right now in terms of an individual. You said, majority of it is Aframed. Uh You consider yourself a conservative investor, moderate investor, or you like me, love to play it all and gamble? <laughs> yeah, I, I think... Um, at the point where I am now, yeah. I wouldn't want to gamble all mm. my um, all my investments because yeah. I share uh, holding in Affirmat over the years yeah. that I've been in Affirmat and I was lucky to to have uh, bought a chunk of yeah. um, Affirmat shares way back when it was at 170. Yeah. I, I, I think now you're, you're smiley right now. Because <laughs> I was I looking at Aframer shares yesterday before the JSE closed. I was like, oh, yeah. someone to one of those people who bought five years ago. <laughs> yeah, so, so you're, you're, not all, you're not always that lucky. Yeah. So you might buy a share. Um, you, you might have invested in something like a Capitec yeah. or a, um, a NASPERS, and then mm. you would also have seen that that growth. And, and, and s to sell everything and invest that, mm. you, you're taking a different... Um, bet on, on, on a different company yeah. so I, I, I and, and it, it depends on the person I, yeah. I, and, and I must disclaim I'm not a financial advisor <laughs> I also use a financial yeah. advisor to give me advice and mm. it's, it's m now more a balanced approach yeah. it's, um, I, and we call it in the company we mm. call it diversification yeah. we've got a diversification strategy and I think in your personal investments you also need a diversified portfolio you uh, need to have some money in property and you need to have some money in share holding because mm. the, um, the s it's also cycles. It yeah. goes up and you get returns on uh, different returns on the different amount of investments. And it, it also comes down to the risk that, yeah, that yeah. you want to take. So if you, there's still high risk investments. Yeah. I still have high risk. There's still one or two business, in yeah. uh, uh, in business ventures that I would say, okay, I'm, I'm prepared to take mm. this gamble and yeah. invest into a business venture if this comes up. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have a good return. Yeah. Um, if you invest all your money in in a in 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 a safe and uh, only in the bank account, you're gonna get two or three percent yeah. return, which is not a good return. With so inflation, eh? Yeah, it with inflation. So you need to have a balance. So yeah. you need to have some money there, mm. and as you grow older, you're gonna have more money that's more safer. Because yeah. at some point you wanna retire, and you don't wanna retire without any any investments yeah, yeah. because then you still need to carry on working until you mm. until you can't and i think that shows also the strategy of afromen some of their three segments and how you guys diversified and protected yourself i think mm. now it also comes back to your life as well yeah. the strategy you practice in real life is yeah. also seen in afromen and the yeah, strategies exactly. and the materials that you guys in and just to now i just want to i don't want to spend more of your time that's just a little bit wrap down the conversation in terms of uh, Affirmat and where it's going. Mm. Where do you see the future of Affirmat? Um, I'm, I'm excited for Affirmat yeah. because, uh, like we said, there's a lot of opportunities. And, 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 and I know Andres yeah. has shared it with the market, some of the opportunities that's there. Um, we, we've got a good team, yeah. um, a good culture in the business. The business balance sheet is strong. So yeah. I'm quite excited about the opportunities that we're looking at and the yeah. new things that we're trying. And, and it, it is a space for all of us, mm. including, including the senior leadership, yeah. where we can grow. Um, I, I will never say that 
I've done growing. Because yeah. if, if I personally, it's the same with a business. If mm. you if you personally don't grow, yeah. you're gonna stagnate, um, mm. and yeah, eventually um, you, you're gonna lose your mental ability mm. and mm. on all those things. So you need to be stim stimulated, and and yeah. I think in in the affirmative environment, we all still very much stimulated. We we all entrepreneurs <laughs> um, type person. Yeah. Uh, even even myself has got that bit of entrepreneurial mm. in, but with the conservatism. So yeah. I need to, I want to be part of this team and, and grow it. Yeah. And I can see all this growth coming for Affirmate. But in my role as well, I need to play also that um, that conscience of the yeah. business as the CFO is. Are, are we going to make the returns? Yeah. You, know, we, you need to ask those questions. So the, the guys will, will always feel, yeah, why is Peter asking all these questions? <laughs> but it is par also yeah. part of my role. I'm, mm. I'm part of the team and I also want to wanna grow the business, mm. but I want to make sure that if we do things, we do it right. The and if, if there is a mistake, mm. that the business still, still survives and yeah. that mistake doesn't cost us um, the business because it's, 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 it's very important and it mm. is... The, the the responsibility that's on mm. on the executive team yeah. is, is quite high. If we make a, a wrong decision in this business and we kill the whole of Affirmat, it's two and a half thousand people that Ooh. lose their jobs, mm. and all the people that's depending on them. And, and there's a lot of people that's depending on everybody that works for Affirmat. Yeah. So we need to make sure that all the risks are addressed and everything it's is calculated. Everything is calculated. Yeah. And, and and yeah. We have been successful with mm. that, but it's not a guarantee that we will be successful going into the future. So we need to make sure that we listen to everybody's mm. comments and we understand all the risk and from all the angles, yeah. look at look at the opportunities. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm still <laughs> very excited about no, Affirmat. Because I remember the CEO said we must watch the space. So I'm going to dive deep into what that <laughs> did because I think you can't disclose that part. But before we end, uh, we end uh, up the, the, the interview, I just want one, one last question in terms of yourself, in terms of like how you see the company's role in South Africa and the development of it. I asked this question to the CEO as well. And when I had a mm. speech with him, but mm. I see the Nkomati, in the mm. uh, investments, mm. uh, and also one of the, the goals that you guys are planning to do is to mm. create 500 jobs. Mm. Outside of that, Afrimet's role mm. in the development of South Africa, Afrimet's role in the development of the youth of South Africa, mm. Afrimet's role in securing... I, mean, I know it's, it's, it's a huge task. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of stakeholders that mm. are involved in it. You can't do mm. it alone. Mm. But where do you see Af Afrimet's role in ensuring that we develop this country? Because one thing about me is mm. that when I invest, I put my money into a particular mm. company or I consume products or services mm. of a particular company that I'm trying to vote. Mm. I'm trying to ensure that that company I'm giving power to continue forward and do good. Mm. When I become a consumer, a shareholder, and whatever it is in a particular company, I want mm. them to do good and play a role in South mm. Africa and change it. Because I know we mm. don't all rely on governments. Governments mm. have a lot of their flaws, uh, but sometimes they're trying. I'm not going <laughs> to go deep into the political side of it. Yeah. But in terms of Afrimet's role, what is Afrimet's role, Af Afrimet's role in the development of South Africa? Where do you see it heading in terms of that as well? Yeah, I think our role is very important. Yeah. It's, um, as as business, um, we st we still a, a very small business yeah. if you look at the bigger economy. But there's still there's still an impact that we can make. Yeah. We can make an impact on on the two and a half thousand people that we're currently employing, mm. on the five hundred new jobs that we're going to create. So so there's a lot of people that depends on on Afrimat as yeah. their livelihood. So we can make a difference in their yeah. lives. Um, so and 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 yeah, what our employees are very important to mm. us because they they the team of people that makes Afrimat a success yeah. so if we look after our employees they will look after the business and yeah. they will look after all our other stakeholders um, the other stakeholders are also important mm. if you, you cannot operate as business alone in yeah, the community yeah. um, because the community you need to look after the community as well yeah. your, a lot of your employees come up, come out of the community mm -hmm. and I um, and and as well as as the surrounding communities, um, mm. being a successful business, a lot of the communities rely on 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 some stimulus in in, yeah. in that um, local economic environment. And so it is very important for us to to not only be a successful business, yeah. but also have a successful stakeholders around mm. us, because then then everybody 
um, will benefit from yeah. that. So yeah, it's, it is very important to us, um, development. And, and, and I think if you look at, at the bigger picture in South yeah. Africa, if, you've, if, if, if we focus on the development and um, the, the education system mm. and trying to upskill people and to learn mm. um, and teach them how, how to work um, and yeah. how to, do, uh, to become better, we will we will probably see that growth and, 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 and mm -hmm. take away a bit of the of the limitations that yeah. we put onto the economy and, and allow the economy to grow because yeah. that will create uh, jobs and yeah. then if the people are developed and trained then they will take the opportunities that that's there we need to create mm. the opportunities first and i think afrimat is in in our environment yeah. where we operate we are creating those opportunities yeah. um uh, and and i think other businesses um, are also yeah. some of the other businesses are also doing that um, but as as a society in in south africa there's so mm. much potential in south africa if mm. if we can all work together and um and uh, create um create that opportunities with mm -hmm. and uh, that all comes comes from growth in yeah. the economy and i think so um, <laughs> i think one thing i love when i look, I look at the interim uh, result was a term that yeah. you guys already already have the target as much as yeah. you cannot do much you cannot control everything that's yeah. happening in south africa but the fact that there's a target that you have set of 500 new job that yeah. you want to create and that you want to reach that for someone as an investor into the company yeah. for someone who's willing to put an extra hundred rand i get from my allowances into yeah. the company something that really motivated me as an investor yeah. to say yeah the leaders company and like sometimes you can wake up the shares are not looking okay but if yeah. i know this company has a goal that impacts society in general yeah. really does motivate us as retail yeah. investors into come so i really appreciate that and yeah. thank you so much for giving right. me this opportunity to have a chat with you as i said i don't like having sit down uh, uh interviewers everything is technical everything let's just have a simple yeah. conversation That's sometimes maybe seen that it's all over the place but trust me it's all about the conversation getting mm. to know the people behind the companies we put our money mm. into the companies we love and the companies we see in the GSE mm. so thank you so much for that. but before we end it top three GSE listed companies that you love <laughs> <laughs> don't mention Afrobet don't mention <laughs> Afrobet three companies you love in the GSE um, yeah that's oh, that's. I know I'm throwing you a deep end right now that's always difficult <laughs> because my my shareholding is sits all in, in Afrobet yeah. at the moment and I would rather invest my money in in a in a in, yeah. in a um, uh, in a unit trust where, oh. where there's people that knows in which companies yeah. to invest in mm -hmm. and they've done if 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 we deal with the analysts from mm. our point of view from from a financial point the, gu the guys that takes yeah. the money at the unit trust like alan gray mm. or investec yeah. um, or old mitchell or sanlam the guys yeah. that um, take the money as a unit trust mm. they invest they buy shares in the companies yeah. Um, they do a lot of homework yeah. so they do a lot of t they spend a lot of time with us in interviews mm. and then they build their models so they know better than me <laughs> how way to invest yeah. but if you look at um, and, and so I would if I would invest um, I would look at companies um, where the management is good because yeah. over time um, this uh, management will, will, will make it work mm. um, and, and saying that, I, I I need to think of of companies where. I hope I let you go. You <laughs> must give it three. <laughs> if you cannot invest it into there, just throw three days right there. Yeah, That's so I like, ah, if I had an extra ten thousand, I'll put it there. If I had an extra hundred thousand, I'll put it there. Just yeah. three. <laughs> yeah, look, um, th there's companies, mm. and 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 it's always difficult. But if you look at what management is doing, yeah. I, um, I I would. Look at a company like like a Shoprite. Okay. Um, with what they did, um, and the more checkers with the online yes. uh, platform. I think they they got it right. Oh, and they, they got it doing right. Trust me, they got uh, it right. Yeah, yeah, with the sixty sixty, yeah. where some of the other guys didn't get it yeah. right. So I think they they they've been innovative, mm. um, and they're growing. So so I would look at if if I look outside of our yeah. industry, there's one or two smaller entities in our industry. A company yeah. like like Calgro, which is a very um, small company that mm. uh, do do construction buildings, but yeah. they've got a management team that is a lot like like yeah. um, And and if you get that management team, mm. um, finances uh, you're gonna get one year that 
that the business is yeah. not performing well. If you look over a, a period of time and you've got a good management, mm -hmm. then, then I think you're going to get your better investments. And yeah, and it's, it's looking at, at those companies where the entrepreneurs are still involved mm. in the business, uh, businesses like, like a PSG or mm. a Capitec, um, uh, are those? Yeah. Those is type of investments is also, I think, mm -hmm. good investments. I, I think I love it, especially when it comes to shop, right? I think they call it right, the online system. Yeah. Trust me, students don't want to go to shop, to shopping. You'll yeah. see the scooters just coming to rest every single day yeah. to deliver. Even if wants bread, people are even lazy to go buy bread. Like, this, yeah. the scooter will come in to deliver <laughs> simple bread. Yeah. So I think shop, I, uh, checkers uh, did well in terms of that. But yeah. thank you so much for the opportunity you had to have this chat with you. I truly appreciate it because it really is amazing to get to know the people the leadership behind the companies we love because most of the time we're not just investing based on the crafts we look we see but also we invest based on the leadership of the company because those are the people that drive and yeah. turn the company around so thank you thank you so much uh, for allowing yeah, me to sir. interview you any last words before we <laughs> close the interview yeah i think you you, uh, you touch on it i think um, to me mm. um people always ask you what is the competitive advantage what makes you mm. different because there's a lot of opportunities to, uh, to take on and yeah. which, which previous people doesn't get, get it right to mm. and and uh, and there are a lot of different things that you can yeah. name as as your competitive advantage but i think the afrimat competitive advantage is the culture of yeah. the business it's it's amazing to to get feedback from people you never heard of a mm. guest house we got a um a voice message from a guest house owner mm. of our people that attended or stayed there yeah. of the culture that they experience and, and that's not something that we tell them how they can mm, be we mm, can mm. lead by example and we can tell people this is the type of culture but people yeah. need to start to change their behavior and live that mm. and i think that that's happening in in, in afrimat so yeah. whenever there's a problem um, we will sit together and as a team we will yeah. find a solution for that problem and, and, and in the current environment I think that is probably the biggest mm -hmm. thing you, you never know what's going to happen yeah. but as a team you can work together to find a solution mm. and, and, and uh, so to me the culture is, is probably the number one um, yeah. thing that makes the difference in, in a successful company uh, thank you thank you so much and you heard it here guys uh, culture of a business really is important to ensure that you grow it but as always guys this was the investor chair where we sit down with South Africans from all walks of life we talk about their journey in terms of dealing with money dealing with investment dealing with budgeting saving whatever you may think about we talk with it right here and I'll be back next week with a brand new episode sitting down with one South African who will be sharing his or her journey so thank you so much for watching don't forget to hit the like button hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell as always i am ivan sambo your student investor thank you so much <laughs>